Hi, I'm attorney Kelly Longton from Kelly Longton Law. And today I'm here to talk to you about intra-family loans and how they work. An intra-family loan is a financial arrangement between family members, one who is lending and one who is borrowing. An intra-family loan may be used to help a family member who needs money for a number of reasons, whether it's buying a home, funding or purchasing shares in a business, adding accounts or property to investment portfolios, Maybe it's paying down some high interest debt or even covering education expenses. Lending to a child or a grandchild can be satisfying for parents. Your loved ones can benefit from flexible repayment terms and interest rates while learning financial responsibility. This can be beneficial if the child or the grandchild would otherwise have difficulty obtaining a loan through some more traditional methods. It also gives you an opportunity to add to your investment income. Let's talk about when you should consider an intra-family loan. How you give or loan money to family members has potential tax implications. The right method depends on your family circumstances. An intra-family loan might be beneficial in estate planning for wealth transfers between generations while minimizing estate tax implications. Further, by using an intra-family loan to provide money to a family member, rather than making a gift, you can maintain control over the principal amount and how it is used. Intra-family loans are valuable tools for preserving wealth and offer a few, of, uh, a few advantages to the families. Let's talk about some estate planning. Under current tax law, gift and estate taxes are not imposed on gifts up to 13.6 million for individuals and 27.22 million for married couples in 2024. While many people's net worth is not that high, intra-family loans may be a great option for high net worth families. If a family member receiving the loan invests the money and the investment return on the borrowed funds exceed the interest rate charge, the excess growth is passed to your family member without being subject to gift or estate taxes. This strategy preserves your lifetime estate tax exemption amount as long as all of the formalities of issuing a loan are observed. However, the initial loan amount, the principal, and the interest owed to you will still be included in your taxable estate because the principal and interest are legally required to be paid to you. However, as previously mentioned, the growth in the investment will not be included in your taxable estate. You might also consider loaning the money to a trust for the benefit of your family member as part of your estate planning strategy, as opposed to the strategy of loaning funds directly to your family member. The loan would be made to the trust. If the rate of return from investing the loan per proceeds exceeds the loan's interest rate, the excess is considered a tax-free transfer to the trust. With intra-family loans, you have the flexibility to set the interest rate at a level lower than commercial lenders, as long as the rate is not below the applicable federal rate called the AFR. The cost savings to the borrower can be really significant. Further, if the AFR is high when you initially make the loan, it may be easier to reissue the note from you to take advantage of any future lower interest rates than it would be to refinance the note from a, a third party lender. Interest family loans can play a crucial role in transferring a family business from one generation to the next. By providing financing to family members who wish to take over the family business, for example, you can ensure a smoother transition and help sustain the family legacy. You'll want to determine the U.S. interest rate to use with an intra-family loan. Now, determining the interest rate for your intra-family loan is crucial to avoid unnecessary tax consequences. The IRS publishes AFRs monthly, broken down into three tiers for short-term, mid-term, and long-term rates. Rates can be fixed or variable and structured to the advantage of both parties. The minimum AFR rate must be charged for loans over $10,000, regardless of a loved one's credit rating, and is usually lower than most commercial lenders. If the interest rate for your intrafamily loan 
is below the AFR. The IRS may require you to pay income tax on the income you should have received under the applicable AFR, even though the borrower did not actually pay that amount. It's called an imputed interest. Also, the amount of interest you did not collect, but should have, may also be considered a taxable gift to the borrower, potentially reducing the amount of gift and estate tax exemption that is available to you. Since the IRS generally assumes that wealth transfers between family members are gifts, it is essential to have the proper documents showing that the transfer is intended to be a loan. You and your family member must sign a promissory note that adheres to the state-specific rules to properly document the loan transaction. Let's talk about some important things to remember when using an intrafamily loan. A comprehensive written promissory note is crucial. It avoids or helps to avoid unnecessary tax consequences and clearly communicates the term of the loan between family members to avoid misunderstandings and conflicts. Every financial decision has the power to strain family relationships. When trying to determine if an intrafamily loan is right for your situation, you want to go over some questions. Will lending to one child appear unfair to others? Should various loan types be considered for different children based on their personal situations? If the child is unable to pay off the loan, will a loan default cause family friction? And will the loan be forgiven at your death or will it be considered a debt owed to the estate or the trust? In either case, how would that affect the other children? You must carefully consider the decision to gift versus using intrafamily loans, including the income, estate, and gift tax implications. The tax rules regarding intrafamily loans are complex and may result in unintended consequences if the loan is not done correctly. If you are interested in learning more about uh, this tool, please reach out to your qualified estate planning attorney uh, that is licensed to practice in the state in which you live, and they would be more than able to help you with this. So I hope this helps you uh, better understand intrafamily loans and how they may be structured. Uh, thank you for following Kelly Longton Law. I'm attorney Kelly Longton, and I will see you on our next video.